I'm Michelle Fursad here with Post Status, and today it's my pleasure to interview Patrick Foster, uh, who is a WordPress developer with SimplyStatic.com. In, re in regards to his experiences with WordCamp Europe as a first-time speaker, as somebody who's networking, and somebody who was um, you know, integral into how things were going with his company and everything over at WordCamp Europe. So WordCamp Europe this year was in Athens. Uh, 2023 it was in Athens, Greece. Beautiful location. Did you enjoy it, Patrick? Did you enjoy the experience overall? Yeah. So first of all, thanks for having me, Michelle. My I'm pleasure. glad to be here. And yeah, uh, I mean, Athens was great. It was like um, my second World Camp Europe. Uh, the last one was in Berlin. I think it was two or three years ago. We had this little COVID thingy, so it might be a little bit longer. And yeah. <laughs> It was absolutely awesome. So from the location to the people uh, around, the, um, around the area and even the locals, everyone was just way too friendly. And it was, yeah. we had good weather. We had uh, nice chats. We had everything that I had hoped for. We do have to acknowledge, though, that the drivers in Athens, Greece, are absolutely crazy in how they drive on the roads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I mean, I was already familiar with that because of my vacation last year in Italy. So Greece and Italy is, have a pretty similar way to drive their cars. And yeah. it almost feels like limits, um, speed limits aren't existing <laughs> in Greece at all. So Exactly. Yeah. And, and also stop signs and traffic lights and everything in yeah. between. <laughs> It's also yes. like there is no no volume limit. In Germany, we have like uh, a volume limit. So a maximum amount of volume your car or your motorcycle is allowed to produce when driving. And yeah. that doesn't seem to be the case in Greece. So at least there is yes. like a little motor roller that sounds like a Harley and it's perfectly fine for everyone there. Yeah, it was, it was a little um, daunting. And we had rented a car. My daughter was driving us. And there was more than one time where we finally got to our destination and she was crying because she was so stressed yeah. and the anxiety was crazy. So my suggestion is Uber as often as possible because in, in a car with somebody who drives there regularly, you have a, a much better chance of not having that anxiety. But yeah, so that was that was for me the, you know, if you if you can say there was a worst part, the worst part was the fear of <laughs> driving yeah. on the road, but everything else was just wonderful. So how were your experiences at WordCamp itself? So I arrived a little bit late. Uh, I wanted to uh, take time to uh, get to the contributor day, but our flight was rescheduled. So we just arrived in the pretty late evening on first day. So sadly, I missed that. And I also missed the speaker dinner on Thursday. Uh, so my yeah. first official day was Friday. And Phew. I it I mean it was great, but it was also like a little bit exhausting. So mm -hmm. I mean it I think it depends a lot on what you usually do for business, but as a developer, we are not like hyper social and uh, right. I got in contact with like 20 different people within my first hour arriving. Yeah. It was like it was fun and the people are all great, but it's like phew, it's it's kind of exhausting. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, um, and and you spoke at, you were one of the speakers this year at WordCamp Europe as well. Yeah. So um, I submitted my talk and I honestly, I hadn't really thought about it. Um, I never expected to be like, yeah, you're allowed to speak uh, at WordCamp Europe this year. So it was more like, yeah, sure. I, I submit my talk and we see what happens. And I got the confirmation and it was like, okay. For real. So I will be speaking at WordCamp Europe. And uh, yeah, I had my talk on Friday, uh, my session on Friday. And it was like, I mean, the, the talk went great. It was a wonderful experience. And I highly recommend it to everyone who's like, want to, want to share their knowledge with other people from the WordPress community. But I was also scared like hell so it was like an hour before the uh before the um presentation i was like okay where's the emergency exit and 
Uh, will people notice that I'm running away if I'm doing it right now? It was kind of scary. So, but the um, you get like um, a speaker assistant, and mm -hmm. that was actually the best experience for me at what computer because my mm -hmm. my speaker assistant was such a nice guy he was so calm and he was so you get this it's not that hard a lot of people yeah. doing it and you can do it as well and it's what like was everything i needed to like calm down and get a little bit more confident about the things i like to share with the people um at the work camp and yeah it was like a wonderful experience for me once it was done but before it was like okay <laughs> calm down calm down you got this See, what, what you don't know is those speaker assistants are actually there to make sure that you don't run out the exit yeah <laughs> that, that was what that was what i was thinking at first <laughs> tell us a little bit about your topic that you presented um my session was about static wordpress and um the basic idea behind my session was to clarify that this whole topic of static WordPress isn't something only developers can do or nerds can do. Okay. And it's basically a thing that is a, a pretty good approach to handle WordPress um, without the maintenance aspect attached to it. Um, so you don't have to like update regularly. You can freeze your website in time uh, mm -hmm. and just host it on a static hosting provider. Um, and I made sure that it's not like um, that it's like for the average WordPress user. So you mm -hmm. don't have to know WordPress pretty uh, pretty good. You don't need any technical knowledge. You just have to like get familiar with the idea of that you have like a separated backend and front end. So what mm -hmm. your actual website is. And mm -hmm. yeah, I shared a couple of little quick wins like how you can make search work or how forms can work on a static website mm -hmm. uh, combined with the uh, topic about like uh, how how do you get even your WordPress website into a static one so sure and and just for anybody who doesn't know if you're working on a stat if you're using static uh, website what is the, like one or two primary um, reasons why you would want to what are the benefits of working with that yeah so one for me it's not the most important one but i know people care a lot about performance so performance is the most obvious point of uh, running a static website they are usually pretty fast even faster than like combined with a caching setup um yeah. so you get a lot of performance out of the box without too much uh, thought into like your site structure and things like that mm -hmm. um another important point and it's for me it's the most important one is security. So mm -hmm. by separating your front end and your back end, so your back end is like protected or it's even r only running on your local machine, um, you get a lot of security benefits. So there's mm -hmm. no real attack vector to exploit for hackers, even if you're not updating your WordPress website mm -hmm. every week, every month or whatsoever. Um, and another point, it's kind of going hand in hand with security. Uh, is uh, maintenance so yes. due to the fact that you separate your your static website or your front-end website and the back-end you don't have to keep up with all the updates and you don't have to double check each time there's an update that everything is still working sure so it does make it a lot easier for maintenance then i can i can absolutely see how that would be true yeah that's great so and and hopefully very soon all of these talks will be available on WordPress TV. So if anybody's interested in learning more, they can absolutely look at your um, your talk there. But are you also um, on social media anywhere? So if anybody has any questions, could they reach out to you on Twitter or yeah. Mastodon or something? Sure. So there is uh, actually there is a recap post on my website where, I'll, where I also embedded the live stream at the exact same point my um my talk started so you can just Excellent. click on the button and you can follow along everything i shared with the community at the WordCamp. and if you want to follow me uh, i'm pretty active on twitter it's uh, patrick posner underscore because patrick posner was i don't know <laughs> who took the sandal but there isn't even a profile attached but we all know how twitter works these days so absolutely yeah. so twitter is <laughs> pretty much the best point to reach out 
Um, if you have like more of a technical question, you can always reach out at hello at simplystatic.com. Um, I try to reach, uh, I try to follow up to everyone and share all my knowledge. And I also produce like tons of tutorials and videos and all of that, all things about static WordPress. So if you that. have any questions, feel free to reach out. And that blog post you mentioned is also at simplystatic.com. Yeah. Awesome. We'll There's put, a we'll presentation all... and also a little write up um, how it was for me um, to be on a on a such a big webcamp and the yeah. people I've met and the parties I've attended and <laughs> uh, sure. things I um, I checked in Athens uh, regarding sightseeing. So there wasn't that much time for me, but I, at least right. I had some time to explore the city and get Excellent. a little bit of sightseeing done. And speaking of the parties and the people you meet, how do you find WordCamps as far as, um, you, you mentioned that sometimes developers are more introverted and less likely to, you know, get out of their developer shell kind of thing. So how do you find WordPress events like WordCamps, especially big events like WordCamp Europe? How do you find that for networking and connecting with others? What is the secret for being a developer and networking yeah. at events like that? That's a pretty good question. So I would answer completely different if we weren't going to talk about a WordCamp. So I think the experience would differ a lot if we would talk about a general big tech conference. That was mm -hmm. for me, that would be like the worst nightmare ever happened. <laughs> but on a WordCamp, it's more like uh, hanging around with a lot of friends. Even if you don't know them, people are so open and uh, so um, it's so easy to get in contact and have a chat with everyone you run into. And it's not like this usual business networking thing where you're like, I don't know, I do <laughs> no, no, no for company A and I right. do no, no, no for company B. It's more like, hey, what you're up to? Ah, oh, you're building plugins or you're building a theme or you're having an agency mm -hmm. or you do like, I don't know, educating people about accessibility. Um, there are so many different and awesome people in this community that you will automatically learn like tons <laughs> of things in a pretty short amount of time. So uh, I think networking is pretty easy. Um, mm -hmm. If I, so if we talk about like the secrets, I would say be open smile smile smiling helps a lot right so yeah. if you look like a grumpy cat you're probably having a hard time getting in contact with a lot of people but if you are open True. and smiling and you're open to conversations that are maybe not even cent uh, centered around what you do so um then you will have a great time at WordCamp. Absolutely. Um, on the wall behind you for anybody who's listening and not watching you have Pac-Man yeah. And we often talk about that Pac-Man concept of if you're in a circle of people, keeping it open so that other people can join you um, and make it easier for people to meet and network that way as well. So I love that you have that example right there yeah. on the wall behind you. <laughs> I attended WordCamp Montclair in Montclair, New Jersey this past weekend, much smaller WordCamp than WordCamp Europe. Um, about 100 people, I think, were there. But I... I never feel like I can't just come up to people and start talking to them because like you said, it's very open. Um, people are are leaving space for others to join the conversation. If people need to have a one-on-one, -on -one, they tend to go someplace else quiet to do that so that you always know that you can kind of join the conversation in process if yeah. there's groups of people, which I think is great. Um, at this, at WordCamp Europe, I did something for the first time that I haven't done before, which is open up my calendar to actually have scheduled, to give the opportunity for people to schedule appointments to talk to me. And it felt a little strange to do that. So like in Europe, I mean, in, a, in Asia, I didn't do that. I just kind of like go with the flow and talk to people as they come. Yeah. But this, this time I was able to open up my calendar and you took advantage of that to schedule some time and we got to know each other. We tried to record this podcast there, but the noise level was too, <laughs> too high. And this is actually... Um, 
probably a little bit easier for people to listen to us today anyway, but it gave me the opportunity to meet you one-on-one -on -one, and I'd only known you through Twitter before. So if you are somebody who might want to meet people and give that opportunity, you could even open up a, you know, a Calendly. I used my Calendly and set up half hour appointments. And I think I met with 14 different people over two days of WordCamp, which gave me an opportunity to kind of stay put in one spot meet people that wanted to pick my brain or talk to me or, you know, whatever it was that the, like lots of people wanted to talk to me about how to get more involved in the community uh, with their companies and things like that. And some people wanted to talk about Stellar WP and how could they work with some of our products and things. So it was really useful to me to be able to do that. Um, it might feel a little daunting for some people to do that, but I think it's also another opportunity to do some one-on-one -on -one or, or small group networking also. So there's lots yeah, of ways I think it, it. it makes it a lot easier if you like have, um, let's say you have like a specific list of people you uh, want to talk with and there are like celebrities in some kind. So it's way harder to just walk by and uh, ask them, hey, do we have like 20 minutes for a little coffee chat? And um, I think these Calendly links or like scheduling um, before the actual event um, can help a lot with that so yeah. that you have the time to meet the people you absolutely want to meet at the WordCamp, um, knowing that you have already set like a specific time slot, um, a specific place like our little coffee bar uh, yeah. at the WordCamp Europe venue. Um, so I think that's also a pretty valid approach to, to network uh, without the stress of actually reaching out to people um, in person and try to fit in in some way. Yeah, I agree. And it made it much more organized for me, although it yeah. did t keep me from doing other things that, that I might want to do. Like I didn't get to see as many of the talks. Um, I didn't get as much swag this year because I wasn't, you know, going from booth to booth and that kind of thing, but it was a much richer experience for me to be able to meet people like you and others, um, you know, from Asia and Europe that I don't have an opportunity to cross paths with as often yeah being over here in the US. So yeah, so I think, you know, whatever works for you, it's great. I, I often talk about sitting down to lunch by myself with a, at a table and letting other people just kind of filter in and say, oh, is this is the seat taken? As opposed to seeking yeah. out people that I get to talk to all the time or walking up to a table that has only a few seats open and saying, may I join you so that I can learn and meet, learn about more people, meet more people and make more friends in WordPress because my friends that I see all the time or that I talk to all the time, I don't need to interact with them at WordCamp. It's more, yeah. it's a better opportunity for me to meet new people or uh, people like yourself who I only know through Twitter to be able to sit down and have those opportunities. So lots of different ways that you can network at WordCamp. And the, and the one thing I do tell people all the time is if you are truly introverted and any of this is still overwhelming to you, find an extroverted friend that will let you tag along with them throughout the day and they will introduce you to everybody that they talk to and it will help you have a more um a better experience so that you're not feeling like you have to intrude on the conversations you let your extroverted friend do that for you and kind of tag along with them and i've i've done that with people as well as had people like just come with me to a word camp hang out with me and suddenly they're making new friends as well so there's lots of ways to interact and network at word camps and i just love that yeah i think it's a pretty good advice um, yeah. But always remember, folks from the WordPress community, you are like in a pretty big group, but there are the chances are pretty high that the other persons around are also introverts. So that might make it a little bit easier if you think about like the person next to you might be an introvert as well. So yeah. starting a little chat is as hard for him or yes. her as it is for you. So don't be shy try it out it's really a rewarding uh, rewarding experience getting in touch with people from the community and go to the parties right and go to yeah i mean the party was a little bit the uh, the official after party was a little bit problematic <laughs> yeah it was pretty loud and it was like a pretty small space for like a lot of people from the community yeah um, but usually that's also a good place to like get in contact with folks and mm -hmm. have a nice chat. And yeah. I mean, there, there are so many ways to get in contact with people around the WordCamp. I mean, there were like 
I don't even know how many like after parties um took took place before the actual world camp started so it was like yeah. an elemental party on wednesday or so so there's a lot of places where you can yeah. get in contact with people and catch up with people you already know but just make sure to not to not like what what you've said with like building an open circle so people can join your discussion um and not like being hanging out all, with all the people you already know there are yes. a lot of awesome people you might not know and you want to um want to get know get to know them and mm -hmm. so um the chances are bigger if you are open to to meet up with new people that's right expand your circle of friends and and your networking yeah. and, and acquaintances absolutely um any final thoughts that you'd like to share about what you're doing with wordpress about events about networking anything all of the above what else would you like to share with us before we sign off mm, i would say um already a little bit i mean yeah i'm, I'm looking forward to WordCamp next year so we <clears throat> i'm sure we have we will have a lot uh, we have learned a lot um from WordCamp Athens now that we might make better in the next version of our WordCamp Europe. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of other pretty big, I mean, WordCamp US is just around the corner. So, yes. um, so there are a lot of ways. And um, one thing, um, especially due to the fact that there was a WordCamp, this, was it this week or last week, Montclair? It was this past Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if it's too scary to like attend a big WordCamp at your as your first uh, experience uh, in all things WordCamp WordCamp communities or WordPress community, um, I'd suggest just participating in a smaller one and getting a little bit into how it feels to be on a WordCamp and how to connect yeah. with people and maybe even volunteering. So mm -hmm. um, that's also, I mean, a better way to get in contact with other folks. Uh, I don't know if if there is a better way to connect with uh, folks from the community. Um, yeah, I just, yeah. I mean, there's there's all the ways, right? And, yeah. and definitely, and and just as an added uh, note, the call for organizers is already open for WordCamp Europe 2024. So if that's something that you'd like to get involved in, um, if you're listening to this and that's something that interests you, the call for organizers is open. Call for volunteers usually comes much later as well as the call for speakers, but yeah. they are absolutely starting to organize. It's a big, big process and it takes a full year. So if you have any interest in doing that, check out the uh, WordCamp Europe website. And Patrick, thank yeah, you so much definitely. for sharing. Thank you for sharing yeah, with me Thanks today. for having me. Absolutely. We'll put your contact information in the show notes. So if people want to read that blog or contact you on Twitter, they can do that. Um, but it's been a pleasure to have you. And I appreciate you taking the time, uh, a second time to come and talk with me. Thank you so much for being yeah, here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.